Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so a very good morning to you guys and today I am going to discuss with you a very important name reaction that is Seyfert-Gilbert homologation right and this particular reaction is also important from entrance exam point of view. So let's just see what happens in this reaction and it's a pretty interesting reaction. It's a reaction uh, which converts your aldehyde or ketone to alkyne all right so uh, it's basically a reaction where a aldehyde or ketone is converted to an alkyne and this is this is a reagent over here that we have used right this phosphor compound uh, this this is known as dimethyl diazophosphonate so this compound is dimethyl diazophosphonate compound and this compound is a reagent the active reagent which leads to this reaction now why is it called homologation reaction because there's an increase in number of carbons there's an increase in the number of carbons whatever the number of carbons over here uh, whatever the number of carbons are there over here there's an increase in the number of carbons and that's why uh, this is called as a homologation reaction right so safer Gilbert homologation now whenever you see a dye as a compound I have uh, told this to you in my numerous amount of videos that whenever you see a dye as a compound like whenever you see whenever you see this group C double bond N2 uh, in 99% of the cases uh, you have to uh, you have to think of a carbene and always in most of the reactions where you have C double bond N2 like I told you 99% of the reactions um, you will find a carbene generated so most pro in this reaction also a carbene is generated and there are many reactions which can actually lead uh, to formation of a alkyne from an aldehyde or a ketone uh, but uh, this reaction is gaining more and more importance because it is being used in a notable in a lot of notable uh, total synthesis of various natural products so this reaction is being used a lot and that's why I am uh, assuming or I am uh I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that this 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 uh, particular name reaction is very important from entrance exam point of view. So generally in CSI net exam as well, there have been a lot of questions that uh, that have come uh, where aldehyde has been converted to alkyne. The, the one of the most notable reactions is Cori Fuchs reaction. All right. So the one of the reactions is Cori Fuchs reaction. C O R E F U H S. Cori Fuchs reaction. Here we are using CBr4. Uh, PPH3 and we are using a strong base a strong base so if we use these reagents as well CBr4 PPH3 and base then also your aldehyde or a ketone is converted to a alkyne right so this is one of the reactions Cori Fuchs reaction uh, I have already made a video on this reaction you can check it out uh, this was asked in your CSI in December 2016 exam so yes there are questions based on uh, these reactions uh, but now let's focus on the mechanism because sometimes what happens is you should also be aware of the intermediates that are formed because in the entrance exam they can also also ask you about the intermediates that are formed in the reaction and now um, the first step is that this base that we are using so this is a reagent uh, right and we are using a base so this base abstracts this hydrogen right which is the most uh, this which is the only hydrogen actually present in the compound so this is the only hydrogen present in the compound it, it abstracts this base abstracts this hydrogen and a negative charge is generated right so base abstracts this hydrogen and a negative charge is generated now we take the reagent that is either the aldehyde or a ketone this R group can be a hydrogen or can also be an alkyl group so depending on whether it's alkyl group or a uh, um or a hydrogen um, it depends whether it's an aldehyde or a ketone and this reaction is only applicable to aryl, aryl ketones and aryl aldehydes right so i will discuss the reason later that why this reaction is only applicable to aryl halides and aryl, uh, aryl uh, ketones that i'll discuss later but let's look at the let's focus on the mechanism first so this negative charge that is generated on abstraction of base on abstraction of hydrogen by the base this negative charge attracts uh, attacks the electrophilic center that is this particular carbon over here it attacks the electrophilic carbon over here which is um, which is attached to the uh, oxygen right so this negative charge attacks this carbon and this double bond O one of the bonds migrates to oxygen forming O minus so now what we get is O minus over here so what I have written down this is the reagent over here right um, to this we had this C double bond N2 group and the negative charge was over here so this negative charge is attached to this carbon over here and we have O minus an aryl group and an R group right this is what we get now this negative charge attacks the phosphorus 
this negative charge over here attacks this phosphorus and what do we get we get a four membered ring right one two three four so we get a four membered ring now i've already written down the regions first uh, i mean i've already written down the mechanism so that uh, I, you, you know this video does not uh, stretch too long and it saves time for you because when i write the write down the uh, mechanism it takes some time so that's why i already already written down the mechanism so if this style suits you please feel, please comment down below and let me know or if you want me to write, write the mechanism uh, along the whiteboard like along with you um, then just let me know whatever works for you whether this already written down works for you or me writing once i start the video that works for you so just let me know how what, what you are comfortable with which uh, which of the two patterns right okay so we have a four membered ring that is formed and this is our four membered ring right so it's better that you label these so our oxygen is number one which is attached to phosphorus so this is our phosphorus which is number four and then on the second carbon you can see we have a aryl group and r group and on the third carbon we have a double bond n2 so this is the compound that is formed and this ring over here is called as a oxyphosphatein oxyphosphatein ring right and this is similar to Wittig reaction this intermediate is also generated in Wittig reaction so it's very similar to Wittig reaction as well so this oxyphosphatein ring is generated and now what happens is uh, this oxyphosphatein ring uh, breaks down uh, basically you can see I have written down with the arrow what happens this bond migrates over here and this bond migrates over here and the um, and the driving force for this particular reaction for this particular uh, rearrangement is that your P double bond O this P double bond O that is formed this is our byproduct so our byproduct will be P O minus um, O M E O M E and double bond O. So this form, this uh, this that is formed, this P double bond O that is formed is very very stable, and that this is the driving force for this particular reaction. So uh, this is the driving force for this reaction, and we get this uh, phosphatein ring, and then the, uh, then this uh, rearrangement takes place to form this compound over here so what is the rearrangement that is taking place this bond is breaking down over here to form a c double bond c and this bond also breaks to form p double bond o so this is what is happening now what do we get we get this compound over here okay which is a ryl group r group then we have double bond c a r r c this bond migrated over here so we got a double bond over here then we had now i have written down c double bond n2 as c double bond n double bond n right so negative charge is residing on the nitrogen and positive charge is residing on the other nitrogen now what happens is negative negative charge migrates like i've shown with the arrow and it forms n triple bond end and this bond also migrates so now what do we get now i'll write down over here so i am rubbing this off okay i'm rubbing this off now what do we get so basically now we get a r r okay double bond c minus charge n triple bond n positive right so once this migration takes place we get a r this we get this intermediate now what happens i told you whenever you see whenever you see n triple bond n with the n uh, with a positive charge on n it's definitely um, nitrogen gas is very stable so nitrogen gas is going to be eliminated so at uh, this nitrogen gas is going to be eliminated right this nitrogen gas is going to be eliminated and then what is going to happen once the nitrogen gas is eliminated uh, then what do we get so i'll write down over here minus of n2 and uh, we get a carbene that is generated okay so we have a carbene that is generated so this is a vinylic carbene okay what is this this is a vinylic carbene that is generated this is a vinylic carbene that is generated so once our vinylic carbene is generated now what happens this bond migrates like this okay and this r group um, or i'll show it with the opposite side so this this uh, ele electron migrates like this this and this r group migrates over here right so what do we get this is our final product that we get so this is the whole reaction and over here we get our carbene intermediate we get a vinylic carbene over here and then this vinylic carbene electron migrates over here this carb the electrons present on this carbene it migrates like this and this r group it 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 uh, it uh, re rearranges or it migrates to this carbon and we get our final product 
so this r group can also be a alkyl group or a hydrogen depending whether it's a hydrogen uh, whether it's a aldehyde or a ketone so this is the whole reaction mechanism for your uh, your safer gilbert homologation reaction again it's a very important reaction from entrance exam point of view and i hope you understood the mechanism the mechanism is actually quite simple and uh, this reaction was developed by a professor in MIT MIT that's Massachusetts Institute of Technology that's that's in um, US right so it was uh, developed by one of the professors over there and the Cori Fuchs reaction that I discussed was developed by none other than EJ Cori he's a very famous scientist and he's considered as if uh, most uh, uh, popular living chemist uh, by people uh, around the world all right and he is his profile is very inspiration inspirational he has done, actually developed a lot of reagents and also he has done a lot of um, name reaction sorry a lot of he has also done a lot of uh, uh, total synthesis of many many natural products right and he said that he went in he liked organic chemistry because of its uh, importance in human health and also because there was some intrinsic beauty that was associated with uh, molecules so that is why he chose organic chemistry as his field of study so he's a really inspirational person and if you are interested in organic chemistry you should definitely read about him read more about him and follow his books he has also written three or four books and definitely if you are interested in advanced level or advanced organic chemistry you should definitely follow his books as well so with that i end this video i hope you like it uh, do share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel uh, thank you so much for watching and all the very best for your upcoming exams thank you